All right, welcome back to KM6 LYW Radio, the show about amateur radio or ham radio, reimagining radio in the information age. Hey, today we are going to connect this to that using nothing but this. That's right, we're going to build a data cable for a Yesu handheld radio or a TNC cable, and it's going to give us access to all the data modes on our phone or our PC. Um, basically, we're going to add a USB port to our Yesu handheld radio, this time on KM6 LYW Radio. All right, I don't know, we do too much Led Zeppelin, right? Welcome back, yeah, we're still doing the free bumper music. All right, let's get to it. All right, so the question today is, how do we connect a Raspberry Pi or TNC cable up to a Yaesu HT? And this could be an FT1, FT2, 3, or 5. They all use the same speaker mic jack. So there's no USB port here like there is on the more expensive radio. So we can't just plug our Raspberry Pi with a USB cable into this. We need some sort of radio adapter. Um, we've got, uh, for let's say you have a Baofeng radio, um, we can use an AIOC device, which has these cool prongs already set up. And we can just plug it in and rock like that. And now we got a USB port on our Baofeng, and we're done, right? Pretty cool device, and it really is set up for the Baofeng and Ken Kenwood 2-pin interface. But your Yesu, your 1, 2, 3, or 5, doesn't have these pins. All we have is a uh, speaker mic jack. Um, where you can plug your speaker mic in there and it's a four prong or trrs plug so how do we get from our raspberry pi uh, to usb <laughs> and into this radio in into this jack somehow well we need a bunch of parts the ace do is it a little interestingly um, in the fact that they multiplex one line between the microphone and the push to talk pin so we really only need three wires and uh, a couple of components here so Stuff I've gathered together so far, we're going to leverage the AIOC device, the all-in-one cable that has USB and then the audio in, audio out, push to talk and ground here. But we're not going to use these prongs because we're using a Yesu. So I'm going to throw this over here. And I happen to have a brand new AIOC that doesn't have those prongs on it. So we're going to see if we can solder onto those pads. Swing. I haven't opened this yet. Hopefully there's an AIOC device in here. We're going to... We're going to find out together here. And I'm going to do it without destroying the device or cutting myself severely. So I can get this open. All right, the AIOC, the all in one cable, really cool. And I ordered this one specifically so it wasn't going to be assembled. There's lots of direct marketing in there. I think we've got it. That is trash. So, you know, I actually got this on eBay. It was a U.S. distributor. These are made uh, by Mark in the U.K. It's pretty cool. And he's actually got the prongs on here. But again, we're not going to use the prongs. And here is the AIOC device. Cool. And it's got a fancy, some fancy colors on it, too. All right, so we're going to adapt this uh, so we can hook up. Uh, this is the USB port, and then there's some pads on here. One, two, three, four, and then there's five, six pads on there. And we're going to use some, what I what I use is an instrument wire. This is uh, like for guitars. Um, I don't know, you can just buy a small roll of this. And we only need three conductors, which is kind of interesting for the Yesu because it's going to multiplex the mic and push to talk line. So we've got these, uh, these three wires here that we're going to solder onto this, and then the other end of this is going to go onto the... TRRS connector like that and get this out of the way I'm not going to be a fang today the uh, two other components we're going to need is a resistor a 2k a 2k resistor at eighth watt smallest you can get and a 10 microfarad capacitor now these two things I mean it, I know it sounds scary but these two things allow us to multiplex uh, the push to talk and mic signals into one wire. So we really only need three wires as long as we uh, implement this. If you want to see how Yesu represents this, you can look here and you can see how they recommend you build a TNC cable. Kind of cool. Uh, this is the TRRS connector and then it, we're not going to use this cable. But what's interesting is this little circuit here between the mic and the push to talk is our capacitor and our resistor. That's it. So we're going to solder a, res a capacitor and, re and resistor in series between the mic and push to talk. And in between the two components, 
we're going to actually send this to the mic wire that's going to go to our radio. So that's it. That's how we get the uh, the, the three wires. Um, so we got uh, the tip is going to be receive audio and then no connect. And then the second ring is going to be the uh, the transmit audio microphone and push to talk. I know it's hard to get your head around that. And then, of course, the sleeve is going to be ground. So let's see if we can implement this little schematic here that Yesu gave us so we can connect our Raspberry Pi to our AIOC cable <laughs> via USB. And then we're going to do a couple of surface mount uh, or a couple of discrete components on here. And then we're going to send three wires to our Yesu using the TRRS adapter like this. And we're going to plug directly into the speaker mic here. So this is going to work on all of the Yesu HT models. Um, let's see if we can put this together. And this is the, this is the first time I've done this, so um, we're going to learn together if this works or not. All right, here's the front and back of our AIOC device. We've got the front over here, we got the back here, and there, there's solder pads. I guess I can do this. It's like the back. That's the front. The important, the, the important takeaway is, is, is there's solder pads. One, two, three, four, and then on the back there's going to be five, six. So uh, this is going to be audio out, the receive audio, and then uh, no connect, no connect, then audio in. That's our transmit audio is here. And on the back, we're going to have a ground pad, and this is going to uh, pull push to talk to ground, this, this pad here. So uh, the Yesu cable is going to add these two components, the capacitor and the resistor, which we've got right here. So that's the schematic we're working on. So I've got the capacitor and resistor, and I'm going to twist these together first. I'm going to twist the negative leg, the one with the stripe. The short leg is negative. I'm going to twist this together with the resistor. Let's, oh, we're going to try anyway. And we need to be able to center tap this too because the uh, we need to also solder a wire to where these are connected. So there is our resistor and capacitor. We're going to solder these uh, negative leg of the capacitor to one end of the resistor. And I actually have all my solder stuff right here. Let's see. I'm not going to pre-tin or anything. I'm not applying flux. You probably should, but this is just kind of a mock-up. We're going to see how this goes. Heat this up and apply solder. Keeping in mind, we're going to solder a wire to that joint as well. All right, solder our resistor to the, one of the pads on the back here. Without making a huge mess. And hold, release. All right, the resistor's on there. Now we want to wrap around. This is going to be a solder point for our microphone wire. Now this the other side, the positive side of the capacitor goes over here. And we're going to solder him onto this pad right there. No shorts. You want to have some handling strength, right? Without shorting anything out. I might end up epoxying this or something. All right, something like that. And we're going to solder right here. Just like that. Now the capacitor is soldered on. All right, let's start with the, uh, not start, but let's go with the ground wire next. I'm going to heat shrink all of this stuff together. What I might do is pre-tin, because I only have two hands and you need three. Pre-tin that a little bit. Yeah, have a little glob of solder. And while you weren't looking, I pre-tin these wires too. So we're going to go ahead and attach the ground wire right here, and we're not shorting out with any other components. And I feel grounded. I really do. Easy enough. Um, according to our little schematic, the audio out a receiver is going to go to the top little pad. That's going to be our RX audio is going to go right here. I'm going to pre-tune that guy. I don't know. I'm a software engineer. They don't they don't let me play with hardware very very much, and it's or at least certainly not more than. Five volts and 
Well, I think that's just better for everybody. That's what we've determined. So i get this pad hot enough. Did I bridge them both? <laughs> Probably. I might have to solder suck that one. I'll put an ohmmeter on it and we'll find out. All right, used a magnifying glass. I don't think I bridged these two pads, but uh, the ohm meter is reading infinite ohm, uh, <laughs> infinite resistance there. So I didn't, I didn't bridge these two pads like I normally would, uh, especially when you're soldering live. So let's uh, let's put this uh, RX audio wire here. I know this looks awkward because man, I don't have my glasses <laughs> or my I can't really use my magnifying glass because <laughs> of the phone. So I am, this is solder by feel. Solder by feel is what we're doing. I'll give it that a little more bend. I'm just gonna hold this. And uh, having done the pre-tinning, I can just melt these into each other, no problem. All right, about a second degree burn on the index finger. Um, when, you, when you're doing this plan time, at ex about an extra 10, 15 minutes for, for medical treatment. Um, to treat your your burns, so that's that, that just looks horrible. But uh, hey, it's gonna work. We got continuity, and then the red guy. Remember, I said we're gonna have to attach the transmit audio or microphone to this thing here, the in between point between the resistor and the capacitor. So let me see if I can bend this guy around, and we'll solder him on there. Now, as far as handling strength goes, normally I would say, hey, you know, make sure you put all of your uh, uh, a bunch of shrink wrap and all that stuff on here, but I would think what I'm going to do is just wrap all of this with um, electrical tape, or if I can get shrink wrap that's big enough. All right, and then if you already burned your index finger, you know for sure you just burned your thumb doing that. So I think the uh, microphone wire is now attached to the between the resistor and the capacitor. So I think this is hooked up. So we've got USB input here, and then we've got uh, push to talk slash uh transmit audio which is the same wire and then we've also got the red wire is going to be our uh, receive audio so now we just need to come up with a length here and connect it to the appropriate uh, pins on our trs jack which is going to fit in our yesu radio and i have that information here so the tip is going to be rx audio the the no connect on the next ring and then the the lower ring or next to the shield is going to be the transmit mic audio slash push to talk um, so that's how we're going to do that okay we got the other end connected to the trrs connector that's going to plug into our yesu ht um, trrs and according to our thing this is going to be the read the receive audio this is a no connect this is the mic slash put push to talk ring and then of course we've got ground here now this was incredibly hard to solder i'm sorry i couldn't get this on film there's just no way i had to use my high power magnifying glass but i you know honestly i practically mangled this thing melted this i can't imagine doing three connections down here the middle connection we don't use luckily um so no problem so all the guy got the red and white so the tip is down here and then the uh the second ring is up here and then this guy the ground i'm gonna i'm gonna solder it together now all right i gotta admit guys i thought this would be easier so yeah we got the ground wire or the shield on there and we got the white and the red and uh, now is not the time to remember the heat shrink tubing and of course the uh, the cowling that comes with this little guy too so i can put the heat shrink on and slip our cowling on and uh, i think we're ready to do a continuity and short test okay continuity check this is going to be the mic wire he's on the ring next to the sleeve okay let's check the ground that's the shield and we get to flip this over and we're going to test the white wire which should be the tip, if I can touch them all. Check that white wire. Yeah, we got beep. Okay, I think we're cool here. All the wires are connected to the tip. No connect, so tip, no connect, 
connect and connect. So we got three signals after that four thing. And man, I am glad we're not using that middle one because I really melted that up really good. Uh, my iron's too hot, my tip's too big. All you hardware guys are yelling at me right now. It's like, oh man, that's not how you do it. But I get it, but you know, hey, in the end, if it works and I didn't destroy too many of these, you know, and the outlay on these isn't that expensive. What are these are like maybe 25, 30 bucks. And we're gonna get a USB port on our Yaesu HT. Let's, uh, now I think it's time to test. I don't think we have any other shorts. Um, I'll do a little more testing just to make sure we're not shorting any voltage to ground anywhere where we shouldn't be. Okay, cool. All right, and it's time for an end-to-end -end test here. We've got our Yaesu HT, which is gonna be driven by our TNC. We've got our AIOC cable that's suitable for any Yaesu AT HT. And this isn't just the XDR or FT series. This would apply to the other uh, more budget handhelds that have no APRS capabilities whatsoever. Um, it's the same exact uh, adapter here. So we've got that. And we've also got a Raspberry Pi Zero 2 wireless. And we've got an optional little screen on here. It has a USB port. And it's being powered by a uh, backup battery. Um, this is running the DigiPi software. Uh, DigiPi.org. Uh, the SD card for this you can download. It goes to patrons of the channel. It's kind of my way of giving something back to the community. So we use it all the time when we're doing data modes. One thing I almost forgot to mention was we really need a ferrite bead on here. And this applies to all HTs, okay? Uh, because this is essentially becomes the other half of this antenna system. And you really don't want to pump a bunch of RF into that. All right, let's do it. Plugging the TRRS into our radio here. Make sure it's off because it does transmit on insertion. Don't know why. Go ahead and turn the rig on. All right, rig is on. And it's on the upper VFO on an APRS frequency, and the save RX is off. Now on the Raspberry Pi, I'm gonna plug this into power, get that thing started up, and then we're gonna plug in a USB kit. Now this is kind of a monstrosity. Um, what we need is a U micro USB to USB-C. I don't know, I'm gonna shop around and see if I can get that cable, but this is an adapter, right? From micro to A to A to C, so you get the picture. Um, so I'm going to plug in the A, plus we get an extra ferrite on here. I'm going to go ahead and plug this into the USB port on the Pi. And then I'm going to take the USB adapter, plug it into our brand new cable. It gets a little bit of a light show there. It's kind of cool. Um, next we are going to see if we can simulate, or not simulate, but actually transmit here. So what I'm going to do is uh, put the DigiPi into DigiPeter mode by pressing this button now that it's online. And a few seconds later, this should beacon out its uh, its official position. So I mean, we'll, we'll hear it and we'll see it light up. So I'm going to press this and I'm going to watch for a red indicator here, red indicator there, and the radio will turn red and we should hear it's birth cry. So here we are going, here we are going into DigiPi DigiPeter mode and in a couple seconds it will transmit. And we have a win. A DigiPi for the win. How cool is that? So we transmitted. Um, actually, you actually heard this over a little bell thing I had laying around over here. And of course, um, it should be able to receive as well. Let me uh, put it into TNC mode. Um, this is where it's just listening and forwarding stuff. And I've got the uh, another TNC here. See here. I'm going to transmit a beacon on this, and we'll see if it receives. And sure enough, there it is. KN6JYI is zero miles to my southwest because we're in the same room. How about that? So we are receiving. Uh, let's see if we're also digipeating. Let's put it back in digipeter mode. And what it should do is when I send this next packet out, if wide one is in the, the digipath, um, we should see it repeat. So I'm going to go ahead and send a beacon out on this and we're going to see it repeat, hopefully. And we did. We got uh, KN6JYI. We see my own packet was repeated here. We are in business. We have a full-blown packet radio TNC connected to a Yaesu HT with the AIOC cable and a Raspberry Pi running the DigiPi SD card image. We are in business. So, so my use case here is to basically take this up to the mountains uh, once I get a more elegant USB cable solution. And I'm going to use this instead of the Mobile Link D, which is what I would normally bring. And the Mobile Link D, don't get me wrong, is a spectacular device, but it's well over $100. This is $15, bucks, 12 bucks, and I already got the radio on me, and this is $30. Bucks. 
And I might be able to do it actually lighter. See, I'm counting grams, right? That's the important thing. So I'm going to button this up now that we've got a uh, working demonstration here. And thanks for hanging out with me and building an AIOC cable for a Yesu HT. I, I don't know if that's a first for ham radio, but it's definitely a first for me.